This is the all new GNOME 48 and it's absolutely packed with stunning new features, superb performance upgrades and a refreshed experience. GNOME 48 is a major release that's finally bringing in the dynamic triple frame buffering tech that's been showing almost 100% improvements in frame rendering performance. We're also getting a new audio player and a document viewer this time. GNOME 48 also brings new default fonts, HDR support, improved explicit sync and one huge feature that's going to completely change your relationship with your computer. This is something that I've been wanting on Linux for decades now. There's a lot here, so let's jump right in. Alright, starting off with the feature that I am most excited for, GNOME 48 introduces a new well-being panel in the settings application. This is designed to help you monitor and manage your screen time. The well-being feature here in GNOME lets you see your daily device usage times and set daily limits to promote healthier digital habits. This is turned off by default. You are going to see screen time data for the last few weeks here and you can set screen time limits here. Once you hit that limit, you will see a notification informing you to stop using this device. You can also turn on this grayscale option where once the limit is hit, your screen loses all the colors and just becomes grayscale. I had done an experiment where I used my phone in grayscale mode and I was quite surprised by how less attractive or addictive my phone became. So this works. But I think they should also provide a hard limiting option that maybe cuts off your device access completely once the time limit is hit. Obviously, this is the first iteration and the well-being feature here is only going to get better and get more options henceforward. The individual app limit is another thing that I want to see here. But this is a phenomenal start and I'm very sure that this is going to enable people to have healthier relationships with their computers. We also get eyesight reminders and movement reminders here that remind you to take a quick walk around and maybe stretch a bit. Right now, this is buggy here and there. I mean, this feature is still in its infancy. But I absolutely love the direction they have taken with this initiative. This is something that I really care about. In this distracted age where billions of dollars are being poured into making us more hooked, more lost in our screens, features like these give us the power to make a conscious decision to actually live our lives and not just spend it staring at screens. I urge you to check this out once this feature drops. And also check out digital well-being on your Android and screen time on your iPhones. GNOME 48 also brings a new default audio player called Decibels. Decibels is a minimalist audio player designed for the GNOME desktop environment. It mainly focuses on straightforward audio playback without the complexities of full-fledged music management applications. Now the thing to note here is, Decibels is not intended to replace comprehensive music management applications like Rhythmbox or GNOME Music. In fact, it doesn't even include features like library management, track browsing, folder monitoring, tag edition and album art integration. Instead, Decibels is intended to provide a clean and efficient interface for playing individual audio files. This is particularly ideal if you want to listen to podcasts, lecture notes or just music files without unnecessary complications here. Decibels has waveform display where it visually represents the audio's waveform allowing you to navigate through the audio visually. It also has adjustable playback speed ranging from 0.5x to 3x letting you listen at various speeds and it also has a very simple navigation system. Just like all the other GNOME applications which have simple naming conventions, Decibels will be referred to as Audio Player in GNOME 48. This is like Nautilus being just called Files or Epiphany Browser being called Web. Nowadays, almost everybody uses media streaming platforms and traditional music players have become somewhat unnecessary. Decibel fills in the gap where it allows you to play music files without the complex music management system. GNOME 48 also brings the Loop Image Viewer version 48 and this has introduced several new features and improvements. It's bringing basic image editing features like cropping, rotation and flipping. We can now crop images directly within Loop with presets and on-screen controls for precise adjustment. The application also allows for rotating images clockwise or counterclockwise and flipping them vertically and horizontally. This update also brings a redesigned overlay for improved zoom controls. I have noticed one thing, pure image viewers that just let you view images are pretty much dead today. The expectation has shifted. Everybody expects at least some basic image editing like cropping to be immediately accessible in the image viewer itself. We are not expecting full-blown GIMP feature in the image viewer, but I want to be able to do some quick tweaks without loading up another app. Cropping is absolutely needed for me. I love that it's brought in here. GNOME 48 brings in a new document viewer to replace its long-standing Evans document viewer. 
Papers is the new cool kid on the block. Let's take a quick look. Papers expands on Evans' capabilities by including image-based formats and comic readers. With Papers, you can open PDF, PF, EPF, XPS, DJVU, and TIFF files. In addition, comic files like CBR, CBZ, and CB7 can also be opened here. There's also a good set of annotation tools that provide markup and note-taking functionality for documents here. Papers is created using the latest libadweta framework and as such brings advantages like high DPI support and modern UI elements. Parts of the codebase, like the UI widgets, have been written in Rust to improve memory safety and maintainability. Papers also has GPU acceleration support, so things like page transition in presentation mode look super smooth. Papers goes toe-to-toe -to -toe with Evans as far as features are considered. But it does shed the legacy technical debt that Evans had, and it aligns with GNOME's push towards providing a modern and contemporary user experience. By the way, if you haven't already, check out my course Linux Mastery Express. I've designed this course to level up your Linux skills very quickly. With this course, you'll get so comfortable using the terminal commands that your friends will think you're a Linux wizard. You'll get perfect with the most used, most useful commands and also learn advanced things like using the vEditor and shell scripting as well. Linux Mastery Express, link in the description, do check it out. One of the most anticipated features in GNOME 48 is the integration of dynamic triple frame buffering into the Mutter compositor. This has generated a lot of noise in the GNOME community as it's showing almost 100% frame rendering performance in many scenarios. This feature, primarily developed by Canonical's Daniel Van Wert over the past four years, significantly enhances the rendering performance, especially on systems with lower-end GPUs like Intel Integrated Graphics and Raspberry Pi hardware. Dynamic triple buffering activates when the previous frame is delayed, which would have caused stuttering and lagginess, especially in high graphics demand scenarios. Then, dynamic triple buffering mechanism activates and it can double frame rates in those situations. Things like GNOME's activities over animations, application switching animations, the menu animations, and many other effects in GNOME Desktop that can sometimes stutter now will look fluid smooth on the same hardware. Dynamic triple buffering is also an on-demand feature that engages only when necessary, so this doesn't cause unnecessary load on the GPU and unnecessary power consumption. This feature is so technically sound that Ubuntu has been incorporating this feature independently way before it made its way into GNOME. GNOME 48 introduces a significant typographic change, replacing its long-standing default fonts with new ones, designed to modernize the UI and improve readability. There are two big changes here. Advaita Sans replaces Cantarel as the default UI font and Advaita Mono replaces Source Code Pro as the monospace font. The Cantarel font that GNOME used has been serving as GNOME's default font for a really long time, and I really like those. But recently, some limitations with high DPI rendering were observed, which prompted GNOME developers to upgrade the default fonts. So after an 18-month long testing and trialing period with multiple fonts and iterations, the new Advaita Sans and Advaita Mono have been selected. The Advaita Sans font is based on the Inter font. Now Inter was particularly selected because of its modern design and active maintenance. Early testing with the new Advaita Sans fonts have suggested improved legibility in UI elements. For a very small number of people, there will be an adjustment time window, but that's negligible. Now it should be noted that distros like Ubuntu, which ship their own custom fonts, will continue using their own fonts even after this, but distros like Fedora will adopt the new fonts by default. GNOME 48 also brings significant advancements in high dynamic range or HDR support. This is said to enhance the visual experience of users with compatible displays. This HDR support is available exclusively under Wayland Sessions as X11 has no plans to support HDR. In the Settings application, under Display, if you have a HDR supported monitor, you will get a dedicated option to enable or disable the HDR mode. Now this HDR mode should be treated as a very initial introduction to it, but support is confirmed for AMD GPUs and Nvidia drivers version 550.54 onwards. Right now, HDR support on browsers is very limited and I don't think any major browser for Linux lets you view HDR content on the web, but you can use the MPV media player to watch your own HDR content. We could already play games in HDR by configuring it through Gamescope, so I guess we will see some improvements in the ease of setting up gaming with HDR in the near future. I think this is big news for us display enthusiasts, because in the near future, we will see significant improvements in the visual quality of the desktop experience. 
will be getting enhanced colors and contrast, sharper and cleaner display. And for a long time, HDR was mostly a feature on Windows and Mac OS. You could see how good certain displays look on those systems. With this, GNOME 48 is going to level the playing field by offering us the same kind of advanced display quality. GNOME is going to get more immersive. GNOME 48 brings a stunning new collection of wallpapers, adding a fresh and vibrant touch to the desktop environment. Uh, let's take a look at what's new. Firstly, the default wallpaper in GNOME 48 maintains its signature style of that elegant blend of abstract forms and geometric patterns. This continues GNOME's distinct visual identity while still feeling fresh and dynamic. The cool thing here, this design seamlessly adapts to light and dark modes, making sure that you are getting a premium desktop experience in both the modes. The additional wallpapers collection brings out a vibrant mix of designs, offering something for everyone. This release focuses on variety, introducing striking new abstract pieces and polishing up the older fan favorites. The wallpapers here are generally minimal, but they do come with bold patterns that bring a modern flair to your desktop. Some people might feel that this is a curious bunch. And yeah, there is an overarching theme here that you can feel and maybe not verbalize. But overall, I like the entries here. With GNOME 46.1, we switch from the long-standing implicit sync method of frame rendering to explicit synchronization, where applications directly manage and coordinate tasks between CPU and GPU to ensure that rendering of frames occurs in correct sequence, preventing issues like screen flickering or visual glitches. While this is an oversimplification of what explicit sync is, I think we get the gist here. The older implicit sync brought many challenges for the NVIDIA GPU plus Wayland configuration. To address this, explicit synchronization was brought in. GNOME 48 achieves major strides in this technology. People with NVIDIA GPUs will see improved frame pacing which will benefit both graphics intense tasks like gaming as well as general desktop responsiveness. Wayland sessions could be, let's just say, not the greatest with NVIDIA hardware. So it's fantastic to see some work being done here. AMD and Intel users also see marginal gains and the reduced overhead of explicit sync boosts efficiency across Vulkan and VA API pipelines. GNOME 48 takes major strides with advancements for Valen, furthering its transition away from X11. Linux distributions can now build GNOME without X11 or x Valen dependencies, although some apps like Steam still rely on it. The x Wayland backend for GTK is also marked as deprecated with plans to completely remove it in GTK 5. While X11 sessions remain possible for now, GNOME 48 does remove some big x Wayland dependencies, simplifying Wayland only setups. The GNOME Display Manager or GDM also no longer requires x Wayland in pure Wayland environments, eliminating x Wayland dependencies from the login screen. I'm just brushing on the topic here. There are many such changes that aim to shed the X11 baggage and solidify GNOME's path towards a valent centric future. GNOME 48 is an absolute update galore with many core applications getting bumped up to new versions with new features. We already saw GNOME Control Center or the Settings app getting new features. In addition, it's gotten touch-ups here and there as well. Epiphany Web Browser also gets numerous interface improvements including a redesigned history dialog for better navigation of browsing history. The UI for importing bookmarks and passwords has been simplified. Also, a small toast notification now appears when downloads complete. GNOME Calendar gets polished up as well with improved event editor dialog. GNOME Maps receives extensive visual and functional updates, and there have been many changes in the underlying tech of GNOME Maps as well. GNOME Calculator gets a new conversion mode and the GNOME software application now lets you install Flatpak apps directly from web links. Well, there you have it. This was an absolutely packed update. Visually, GNOME has stayed consistent, but functionally, this version just shoots up. Dynamic triple frame buffering, new audio player and document viewers, well-being, HDR support, there's a lot of work that has gone into this release and playing around with this beta version has really impressed me. I'm really looking forward to the polished up final release. Alright, if you enjoyed this video, if you found this video useful, definitely consider subscribing to the channel and also leave me a big thumbs up. And if you're interested in leveling up your Linux skills, the link to my course Linux Mastery Express is given in the description below. It's designed to teach you Linux and take you from zero to hero in the shortest time possible. You'll be using Linux like a pro within a matter of hours, so definitely check that out. Next up, 
check out the top 10 hottest terminal apps that you should be using. I got some really cool ones there, so definitely don't miss that. Alright, this is Linux Techs signing out. <laughs>